Jamie Browning, I'm coming to knock you out. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my seat. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Keith No, I have Elijah Thacker with me. We're going to be talking to Steve Walden tonight about his upcoming professional boxing bout with Jeremy Browning from Hearts, West Virginia. Steve's coming from Georgia. He's going to be going down to Jeremy's hometown to uh, to uh, you know try to knock Jeremy down in front of all his people, all the all of Lincoln County. Um, Steve. <laughs> 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 Oh man, Keith gonna start out with jokes. <laughs> I ain't trying, baby. I'm coming. All right, all right. Embarrassment. I suffered <laughs> on the last match. Yeah, that was my fault. No, I'm not. I'm not ill. Ill prepared now. I've got stamina. I've got a little bit of cardio. Oh baby. Oh baby. <laughs> First time I've ever been put down in my career. Yeah. I got to come back from this. There's a bounce back coming. And I'm still drinking cool. beer. All right. <laughs> so, Steve, you were already scheduled to be on this card, but you were supposed to fight Ryan Carroll. Some things changed up, and now you're fighting Jeremy. And I can sense that mentally this is going to be a totally different fight for you because, you know, you had a pass with Ryan. Things are different, Jeremy. So what's changed? Well, Ryan Carroll was my coach. He was uh, the man that, that showed me the proper ways and proper techniques of boxing. Now I'm coming up against a guy that is getting his pro debut. Well, I've done had mine. My nerves, yeah, they got me. I got rocked. Yeah, that was my fault. I was ill-trained. I wasn't prepared. I drank too much beer and smoked too many cigarettes. Hold on, wait a minute. Let me take a draw of this one. This is how much I care about this fight because I know I ain't going down. You know, my, yeah. my dad raised a daughter. Yeah, that was my brother. So, uh, now, <laughs> Jeremy, you better be ready, bro. I I'm just telling you. Um, I'm not coming to lose. It's 850 miles from where I live to uh, – what was the name of that place again? <laughs> the Creek, Where son. was we fighting at again? Oh, it don't matter. <laughs> I'll fight all over West Virginia. I don't care. Yeah. Wherever New Line Cage fighting's at. And uh, coming up January, Keith's got uh, – what's it? Uh, New Line – Boxing championship, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah I'm going to fight until boxing. I'm 40. Yeah, I'm fighting until I'm 39 plus. I, I'm not giving up. There, There's nobody in the state of West Virginia that can make me quit. It ain't going to happen. It's not in my blood. And I'm going to tell you like this. Jamie Browning, I've heard your name. I'm not impressed. Show me. Mm. You want to fight in your hometown? Right. You think you're going to knock me out? You're coming to win? Sorry, buddy. I'm coming to disappoint. I'm not going to drive that far just to drop down, be somebody's little whatever. It ain't going to happen. I'm coming to knock you out. I'm not coming. Mm -mm. Not coming to lose. Mm -mm. Ain't going to happen. Uh, we see in this fight that Jeremy's kind of got this hometown hero thing going on, but I know you've got roots there in hearts too. You got your dad's from there and I know your dad was a big influence in your life and he means a lot to you. So what's it mean to be fighting from where, where your roots are? Well, my roots are actually in Logan County. Uh, my mother was the daughter of Bud Blankenship down on uh, Buffalo Creek. So down man area, you know, Bruno, those good Ackerville, Amherstdale, those areas. And uh, my biological father is from Logan area. He went to Man High. He lives on Hearts Creek. He's actually one of Jeremy's neighbors. But, uh, you know, I'm not coming to impress anybody. I'm coming to show me that I'm that I ain't lost it. Yeah, I'm coming to show other boxers and fighters. If you're going to step in the ring with me, I'm going to throw hands. Yeah. Yeah. I had a misfortune on my first pro bout. I was nervous. I ain't gonna lie. 
there, there's so many nerves. And, and I heard in the video, um, I, I watched the interview for Jeremy. He said, you block out everything. You can't hear nothing. Really? You hear everything. You do. There's no way you could block out that much noise in a small venue. In a small to medium venue, you cannot block out noise. It, it, you can't. If you do, you're inhuman. And if you're inhuman, put me on my rear, buddy. Please, I beg you. I challenge you. Hit me in the jaw. It's not glass, but yours is. But yours is. But yours is. Hey, history always tells itself. Just saying. All right, Steve. In our last interview, and you kind of touched on this a second ago, one of the most interesting things I heard you say at the very end, you said when you go out of there, you want to prove to yourself without a shadow of a doubt that you're a fighter. So do you feel like after you lost that last fight, do you feel like you, you doubted yourself a bit? Do you think other people doubted you? And what does it mean to you to go in there and kind of show people who you are and show yourself who you are? Okay. On my last fight, that's the question. Um, to me, uh, I took a pretty hard shot to the temple and when I came down for an uppercut, he come with his with his left, and I never seen his glove. But in the nick of time, if you look at the photographs, I was able to bring my hand up to try to block it. I didn't take a full impact. I think what it was was adrenaline, the bounce back. Elijah, I don't know if you ever seen the playback or the footage of that fight. Uh, I know yeah, Keith I've did. Uh, I bounced up so fast. I think what happened was with adrenaline, nerves, pressure, the the hit to the temple. I think what I did when I bounced back up, it was like choking yourself, squatting down, standing up. You know what I'm talking about? And passing out so your buddy can catch you for that bull crap high <laughs> these kids do. It's weird weird but i think what happened was when i stood back up i didn't i honestly did not hear the ref i did not hear robert riley uh when he said it the second time i looked at him like what did you say and he called the fight um yeah my right eye wasn't right i agree with that i do not do not whatsoever have any bad things to say about robert calling that fight because the way I bounced right back up and wasn't able to hold my own. He, he was correct for that, but I feel that I let myself down. I let the people that cheered me on that were there for me. I let them down because I was not 100%. That's my fault. But, and I'm not blaming Keith for this, please. God, I'm not blaming Keith. I had how many opponents for that fight? Uh, I think we had three. Three. Yeah. Mikey yeah. was the third. Yep. All Mikey right. was so, a – yeah, you had one opponent. Then uh, it, it had, had a blood work issue. Then the other yeah. guy came down with got pneumonia. pneumonia. And I told you yeah. – and I told you when 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 brother got his mm -hmm. – the pneumonia, I told you he don't have chance. He does not have the proper opportunity to train. And I told you I did not want to fight him. Because of that, I wanted to fight somebody that had the proper opportunity to train. Yep. And, and I took time. Mikey because I wanted to fight. I wanted to come show West Virginia that I have not lost it. That I still want to do this. Yep. I think uh, that's one of the most interesting aspects of this fight. Both you guys are looking for redemption. You're both coming off tough losses and – you know, it haunts you. You can tell from talking to both you guys, you think about it. You think about, you know, you want to change things. You don't want to leave that as the end of your story as a fighter. So one of you is going to have to lose. How does that make hey, you Elijah, feel? Elijah, let me say it this way. 
All right. I was born in Savannah, Georgia. I was raised in Midway, and I'm fighting out of Midway, Georgia. That's my hometown. It's where I was raised. Um, I lived in West Virginia on and off for 17 years, and West Virginia is a home to me. Um, one thing I'm not looking for is redemption. Redemption is, is not the word for me. Um, when you speak of redemption, redemption is coming back to resurrect yourself. I'm not trying to resurrect myself. I know who I am. What I'm trying to do in this next fight is come out, do my thing, have this hand raised or this hand raised. I don't care which one it is. I don't even care if they raised my hand. I'm not looking for redemption. Right. I'm looking All for right. solid. You're, you're not looking for redemption, and you know who you are, so tell me and tell us who are you. I'm Steve Ray Walton. I am the Georgia boy. At one point in time, I was referred to as the rough and rowdy Georgia boy. I'm a brawler. I'm a fighter. Now I'm a boxer. When you put all three of those in one term, I'm a dangerous, pretty light person in the heavyweight division. I have no fear. You can't scare me. You can hit me all you want. You won't hurt me. I've proven that time and time again. So Jeremy wants to hurt me. But you better bring the outhouse. I don't think the house is enough. So going off, you know, you're you're not a big heavyweight. You know, you're five foot seven. You're just over two hundred pounds. Five foot eight. Don't do me like that. Five foot eight. eight. Just in your uh, yeah, just over the uh, heavyweight or just over the cruiserweight limit of boxing. So that's something that's something we have spoke about. You know, and and. Going back to when you were doing rough and rowdy, tough man back in the day, you know, you were always fighting as a lightweight. You know, you were always, you know, fighting in the lower weight classes. And, yep. um, you know, then you uh, started drinking a little more. <laughs> well, hold, 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 hold that thought. Hold that thought. Let me show you something. Go, Georgia. <laughs> Go, dogs, right? Every day of the week, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and go um, big blue i love the mountaineers yeah that's my team and um uh, so do you think this is gonna be the last time we see you as a heavyweight yes i do um i mean i'm having the intention of dropping down the cruiser uh it's not because i feel that i'm small in the heavyweight division it's that i feel that I would be able to fight better and and be a better fighter at the cruiserweight division at my height size and my weight size and not be able to just take a beating. I just feel that at, at my weight size, it's the right time to do it. Yeah. Especially at my age. I mean, I'm 37 years old, but I'd be 38 in March. Yeah. I ain't getting no younger. Might as well drop down uh, and make the best of things. That way I continue fighting until I have to quit. So, Steve, uh, when you think about this fight, uh, how do you see it playing out? I'm going to say it's going to go all three rounds. I think there will be a decision. I look to try to have an upset. Um I mean, he, he's been fighting, and I've been sitting on the couch watching everybody fight. Uh, it's not every day that a pro license gets to fight. I yeah. mean, we have gaps. So we have to mentally prepare ourselves as pros, and we have to physically prepare ourselves as pros. Um, he's coming off an amateur fight, several of them, several. Uh, King of the Mountain State, no offense, Dermy, but – I don't know how you made it to the last round. I, I kind of thought you got knocked out the round before that. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if you got knocked out or the TKO, but somehow you got to another round. And why? How? It was the king of the mountain state, so, not queen of the mountain state. 
It was the king of the mountain state, not the queen of the mountain state. So, um, so uh, Steve, do you feel loud, like buddy. you've got an experience? <laughs> do you what is feel like you've got an experience advantage coming into this fight? In other words, I've got a little bit of experience. I mean, I know the first round is going to be nerve wracking for Jeremy. He's never fought pro. So he's going to be worried about what I'm going to do because I don't even think he's ever seen me fight. If he has, I don't know where the videos came from because I'm not on the internet fighting. You look me up on the internet, you're going to get a damn mug shot. But that's besides the point. That was like, <laughs> what, 11 years ago? That's been you, can't than that. the internet. Yeah. you can't find fights of me on the internet. You just can't do it. I mean, yeah, you're going to see Mikey knock me out. Well, TKO standing TKO to clarify everybody's doubts and thoughts and all this negative stuff. I've heard about it, but I got a piece of paper right now inside my house. that says it was standing TKO. I was not knocked out. I just wasn't able to hear the judge. And when he called it, he did that to protect me because evidently I wasn't fit to fight. And I respect that. Yeah. Now, there's one video out there somewhere. I don't, I don't know where it's at because I saw it one time, and now I can't find it. The fight. Was it uh, me and Jarrell? Yeah, you and Jarrell. Yep. Me, me and Sanders. Yeah, dude. Yeah, went the distance. I dropped it was 20 a good fight. pounds to fight that dude, man. I was tired. Good God, I was tired. And Ryan Carroll pushed me to that. Him and, uh, uh, oh, man. Oh, what was that boy's name? Oh, goodness. Uh, James, Ralston. Yeah, Ralston. James Ralston. James Ralston, that man, I'm telling you, Ronin Jiu Jitsu of Parkersburg. Man, I'm telling anybody, man, if you're in Parkersburg area, y'all look up Ryan Carroll. That man will make you a phenom. He won't make you a dangerous person, he'll make you a phenom. That man turned me from a brawler that trained with the one and only Keith No. And made me a boxer. The man turned me into a boxer. Mm -hmm. he, he turned me into an MMA fighter too, but we ain't gonna talk about that because I don't want to do MMA. I'm too old, too fat. <laughs> I mean, given an opportunity, person's close to my size, I might be able to, you know, I might put them old gloves on too. But <laughs> opportunity's gotta be right. Yeah. Weight's gotta be right. Don't start, don't start calling me out now, Steve. We're buddies. Hey, check us out, man. I wouldn't pull your mustache for anything in the world except uh, number one from KFC. <laughs> guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you all my predictions. You want a prediction of the fight? Y'all yeah. got more questions? Absolutely. Before I give a prediction? Do y'all have any more questions Let's before wait. I give a prediction? I got, I got one question for you. All right. I'm ready for it. Come on, Keith. Fury or Wilder? Fury, Wilder. Steve Ray Walden, the Georgia boy. <laughs> oh, come on now, Steve. You got to give us something. Come on now. Fury. Fury. Seventh That's round. That's a good choice. Seventh round, Seventh CKO. round. Man, nobody's oh, picking the American fighter. Standing TKO. I'm gonna go with Tyson. Okay. Yep. All right. One more question. All here. right. Let's hear your prediction. Walden. It's gonna happen on November sixth. Walden or Browning? Steve Ray Hartman. Okay. <laughs> Second round. Standing TKO. Okay. You told me five minutes ago. I'm going to go say, three rounds. I'm going to say, I'm going <laughs> to say this. I'm going to give Jeremy just a little bit of respect. I got to give Jeremy a little bit of respect, benefit of the doubt. First round's going to be hell for him. Yeah. I feel he's going to give it back to me. Second round, the nerve's going to ease, but he's going to drop his guard. I'm going to say about two minutes and 37 seconds into the second round, he's going to drop his guard. He's going to get too comfortable. And that right is going to do it. It's not going to be my left. It's going to be right. 
You're saying two minutes, 37 seconds into the second round, you were going to drop him with your right hand. We'll drop her right. Okay. That's super specific. And I'm going to say I'll be really hand right. I'm going to say it's overhand right. Overhand right. I'm going to say overhand right. Might even be a right hook. Two minutes and 37 you know seconds. I'm going to say two minutes and 37 seconds in the second round, overhand right or right hook. Okay. That is very you, specific. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's going to be about that. He's going to get comfortable. He's going to get comfortable. I've watched this video. He gets comfortable in that second. That's where he hurts himself. Okay. So, Jared, at that two minute, hey, Hard Creek. Second mark. Let me like, tell you something, Hard Creek. It might be the second, but it might be the first. It might not give you the ability. Might not give you the opportunity to make second. Just saying. You need to make up your mind, Steve. <laughs> I'm a fighter. I got to play mind games. If I don't play mind games, I'm not fighting. So if we if we go to the fourth <laughs> round, dance. what are I'm the chances? I'm not trying to dose you though. What are the chances this fight goes four rounds? Four rounds. Yeah. How many rounds are you gonna give us? Four rounds. <laughs> Is it four? <laughs> I'm about to tell me three. It ain't going uh, four. <laughs> it ain't going four. It's all right, not going so, four. So you're. It it, I don't think it's gonna go three. So are you telling me right now that I don't need to go out and spend money to buy that round four card, right? For the ring girls to carry around. Don't even <laughs> buy it, right? If you have to, I'll pay for it. <laughs> All right. We'll have to round four card is gonna have Steve's face on it because yeah, it yeah, he's gonna have, have buy my it. face on it. You know what face is gonna have on it? What's that? VFW six six zero two in American Legion of Hinesville. I'll put it on there. For my fight. Okay. You let me know how much it costs. <laughs> I pay for it. Because it ain't going to happen. <laughs> yep, I'll you. put that on everything I love. I tell you what, if it goes to round four, I'll retire from boxing after the match. And you know how I feel about retirement. Because I ain't that daggum old. <laughs> now, see, the, see what you done did? Now I got to get another beer. You going to hurt my feelings, Keith. <laughs> Why you going to hurt my feelings? Why you got to do that, man? It's because you're calling 37 old, man. I wish I was still 37. I don't want to leave 37, man. My old lady, 28, and I'm scared to goddamn go any older. She might leave my old ass. <laughs> Speaking oh, of your I'm, old lady, you got any shout-outs? Let, let, any- let me apologize real quick. I did not mean to use profanity. I apologize to anybody that sees this. It's underage and nobody approves of it. I do apologize. I don't even remember you using profanity. I don't well, I think you have. Word. I just said a bad word. And I, I was in, trying to be just polite about it. Just in case. <laughs> no, I said a bad word just now. And I apologize for it. Trust me. Yeah. Just keep right. me get another beer. It's Keith's fault. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, you got a shout out for anybody anybody you want to uh give it up to before your fight that's influenced yes, you out yes, I do. been there for you um at this moment in time i would like to give a shout out to down home entertainment um of georgia uh southeast georgia excuse me um brent walden is the owner of down home entertainment uh, DJ and KJ services are provided by him. I am an employee and I am sponsored by them. I want to give a shout out to the VFW 6602 of Hinesville, Georgia for sponsoring me and putting their name on my trunks. I want to give a shout out to the American Legion of Hinesville, Georgia. They feed me a lot of beer and a lot of fireball and I love them for it. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Elbow Grease uh, Auto Detailing, which is owned by a good friend of mine, uh, Marvin Smith. If anybody's in Georgia and needs your vehicle detailed, he's the man to get a hold to. Please get on my Facebook. You can find his his link there. Um, also, uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Darien Sports Lounge of Darien, Georgia. 
for having me DJ there and being a contributor to sponsorship. And that is all my shout outs, other than my father and my stepdad for believing in me okay. and always pushing me to achieve. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jeremy, real quick. Let, let me say this real quick, if y'all don't mind. Don't hug me or fight me. If you get tired, tell me you're tired. I won't hit you as hard. I promise. <laughs> All right. Guys, hey, thanks for your game. Hey, everybody, thanks for coming on. Thanks for watching. And uh, November 6th, New Line Cage Fighting 7, March, West Virginia, Old Hearts High School. We'll come back. <laughs>